This is the United States. This is New York State. And this is Westchester County. Did you know that something once happened in Westchester that was so important that it decided the future of the United States itself? The year is 1781. The Revolutionary War has been raging for six long years, with the Americans suffering many losses and few victories. Now, the situation is desperate. The soldiers are hungry and tired, their uniforms ragged, and most of them have no shoes. They fight barefoot. General George Washington fears that soon the war will be lost. But still, there is reason for hope. The country of France has agreed to help America in its war against England and has sent soldiers and money. Now, Washington meets with the French General Rochambeau. And together, they agree that their armies will march to meet each other and join forces to attack the British. In July of 1781, the French army of 5,000 men marches all the way from Newport, Rhode Island, 220 miles in the heat of summer, to Westchester, camping in Bedford and North Castle, till they reach their final destination in what is now Hartsdale. General Rochambeau makes his headquarters in an old farmhouse nearby, which today is known as the Odell House. The American army marches down from Peekskill, and they set up camp in what is now Ardsley. Since much of this area is known at the time as Phillipsburg Manor, the encampment of the two armies is called the Phillipsburg Encampment. For the next six weeks, this will be the fourth largest city in the United States. But it's not just soldiers in the camp. There are blacksmiths, carpenters, bakeries, markets, laundries, even hospitals, and every week over 200 oxen and sheep are fed to the troops. Many of the American soldiers have their wives and children living with them in camp. Some local men even leave camp for a short time to work on their nearby farms. And something else is special about the Phillipsburg encampment. Roughly 25% of the American soldiers are African American. Some are enslaved serving in place of their enslavers on a promise of freedom after the war. But others are free men. Known as the Rhode Island Regiment, it is three-quarters African American and stands out for its fine dress and precise maneuvers. Just two months before Phillipsburg, on May 14, 1781, eight men of the Rhode Island Regiment are killed in nearby Yorktown, New York, in what becomes known as the Battle of Pines Bridge. They, along with Native Americans, who are also soldiers of the regiment, die defending the life of their commander, Colonel Christopher Green. The Pines Bridge Monument in Yorktown, New York, stands today in their honor. George Washington knows that to win the war, he has to strike a devastating blow to the British Army. Since the British are in control of New York City, just 20 miles south of the encampment, Washington wants to attack them there. General Rochambeau believes that the better plan is to attack the British in Virginia in their fort at Yorktown. There, the French Navy can assist the attack, something not possible at New York City, because the New York Harbor is too shallow for the heavy French ships. For days, Washington and Rochambeau, aided by American scouts, spy on the British defenses and troops around New York City. Washington and his soldiers fire on the British to get them to fire back, so he can determine the positions and strength of the British forces. During these missions, the French officers are very impressed that the American troops, though in very rough condition, still fight with great discipline and courage. But soon, Washington begins to see that the British Army is simply too strong, their numbers too great, and attack there would mean certain defeat. 
Then, on August 14, 1781, a letter arrives at Rochambeau's encampment headquarters in Hartsdale at the Odell House. It's from the French Admiral de Grasse, telling Rochambeau that his navy will soon sail to Yorktown, Virginia. With this information, Washington is now certain there is no chance of attacking New York City. The American and French armies break camp at Phillipsburg and start their long march of over 400 miles, first marching north, camping in Yorktown, New York, then crossing the Hudson River at Verplanck's Point, where the river is only a half mile wide. But before leaving the New York area, Washington wants to fool the British into thinking that an attack on New York City will still be coming. So he constructs an army camp in New Jersey within sight of the British in New York City. But the camp is fake. The British are fooled by the trick and for weeks keep waiting for an attack that never comes. When the American and French armies reach Yorktown, Virginia, they fight together to defeat the British forces. On October 19, 1781, the British General Charles Cornwallis surrenders to General Washington and General Rochambeau. It's a victory that would soon mean the end of the Revolutionary War and the birth of a new nation called the United States of America. It's a victory won by the combined American and French armies who first met at the Phillipsburg encampment in Westchester County. <laughs>